Photocopiers. A photocopier is a machine that makes paper copies of documents and other visual images quickly and cheaply. Most current photocopiers use a technology called xerography, a dry process using heat. Photocopier was invented by Chester Carlson. The actual photocopying process relies on only a few key pieces. Photoreceptor drum, corona wires, lamp and lenses, toner, fuser. The surface of a cylindrical drum is electrostatically charged by either a high voltage wire called a corona wire or a charge roller. The drum has a coating of photoconductive material. A photoconductor is a semiconductor that becomes conductive when exposed to light. When you hit the start button, a strong lamp moves across the inside of the copier and casts light onto the paper you're copying and the drum starts to rotate. As light reflects off of blank areas of the paper, mirrors direct it through onto the drum surface. Like dark clothing on a hot sunny day, the dark areas of the original absorb the light and the corresponding areas on the drum's surface are not illuminated. The toner is positively charged. When it is applied to the drum to develop the image, it is attracted and sticks to the areas that are negatively charged, just as paper sticks to a toy balloon with a static charge. The resulting toner image on the surface of the drum is transferred from the drum onto a piece of paper with a higher negative charge than the drum. The toner is melted and bonded to the paper by heat and pressure rollers. The drum is wiped clean with a rubber blade and completely discharged by light. This example is of a negatively charged drum and paper and positively charged toner as is common in today's digital copiers. Solar Cells a solar cell or photovoltaic cell is a large area electronic device that converts solar energy into electricity by the photovoltaic effect. The photovoltaic effect was first recognized in 1839 by French physicist A. E. Becquerel. However, it was not until 1883 that the first solar cell was built by Charles Fritz. A solar panel is a large flat rectangle, typically somewhere between the size of a radiator and the size of a door made up of many individual solar energy collectors called solar cells covered with a protective sheet of glass. The cells, each of which is about the size of an adult's palm, are usually octagonal and colored bluish-black. Ballpoint a pen is a tool used for writing or drawing with a colored fluid such as ink. A ballpoint pen is a pen that uses a small rotating ball made of brass, steel or tungsten carbide to disperse ink as you write. It is very different than its pen predecessors, the reed pen, quill pen, metal nib pen and fountain pen. A Hungarian journalist named Laszlo Biro invented the first ballpoint pen in 1938. The key to a ballpoint pen is of course the ball. The tiny ball is held in a socket and the back of the ball is exposed so it can pick up ink from the reservoir. This ball acts as a buffer between the material you're writing on and the quick drying ink inside the pen. The ball rotates freely and rolls out the ink as it is continuously fed from the ink reservoir. The ball is kept in place between the ink reservoir and the paper by a socket and while it isn't tight, it still has enough room to roll around as you write. As the pen moves across the paper, the ball turns and gravity forces the ink down the reservoir and onto the ball where it is transferred onto the paper. It's this rolling mechanism that allows the ink to flow onto the top of the ball and roll onto the paper you're writing on while at the same time sealing the ink from the air so it does not dry in the reservoir. For many centuries, a mixture of a soluble iron salt with an extract of tannin was used as a writing ink and is the basis of modern blue-black inks. Modern quick-drying inks usually contain three things, the vehicle, coloring ingredients and additives. Battery The common battery is a device that changes chemical energy to electrical energy. The most commonly used type of primary is the zinc or carbon battery or dry cell which were invented in the 1860s by French engineer Georges Leclanc. This type of battery is the standard battery for use in equipment such as flashlights, toys and radios. 
It consists of an outer case made of zinc, which is the anode, a carbon rod, which is the cathode, in the center of the cell, and the space between carbon rod and the zinc contains a paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. The cathode is a mixture of manganese dioxide and carbon powder. Electricity is the flow of electrons through a circuit or conductive path like a wire. The cathode and anode are hooked up to an electrical circuit. The chemical reaction in the battery causes a buildup of electrons at the anode. This results in an electrical difference between the anode and the cathode. The electron wants to rearrange them to get rid of this difference. But they do this in a certain way. Electrons repel each other and try to go to a place with fewer electrons. In a battery, the only place to go is to the cathode. But the electrolyte keeps the electrons from going straight from the anode to the cathode within the battery. When a wire connects the cathode and the anode, the electrons will be able to get to the cathode lighting the light bulb along the way. This one way of describing how electrical potential causes electrons to flow through the circuit. However, these electrochemical processes change the chemicals in anode and cathode to make them stop supplying electrons. So, there is a limited amount of power available in a battery. When a battery is recharged, the direction of the flow of electrons is changed. The electrochemical processes happen in reverse and the anode and cathode are restored to the original state and can again provide full power. Bicycle The bicycle or cycle is a pedal-driven human-powered vehicle with two wheels attached to a frame, one behind the other. Bicycles are simple and beautifully elegant machines that attract just about every kid at an early age, working their way up from tricycles and training the wheels. Some history books will state that Pierre and Ernest Michauk, the French father and son team of carriage makers, invented the first bicycle during the 1860s. Historians now disagree and there is evidence that the bicycle is older than that. However, historians do agree that Ernest Michauk did invent the modern bicycle pedal and cranks in 1861. Bicycles are made of just a few parts that you can immediately see and identify. The core is the frame. A bicycle's frame is made of metal tubes welded together. Each tube has a name as shown here. The front fork is the movable part of the frame that holds the front wheel. The wheels. The wheels are made of a hub, the spokes, the metal rim and the rubber tire. The seat and the seat post. The handlebars and the handlebar stem that connects the handlebars to the frame. The cranks and the pedals. The brakes consisting of the actuators on the handlebars, the brake cable, the brake calipers and the brake pads. The chain and gears consisting of the front chain wheels, the rear free wheel, the front and rear derailleur and shift levers on the handlebars and the cables. A rider would push the pedals to make the machine go forward. Quartz clock a quartz clock is a clock that uses an electronic oscillator that is regulated by a quartz crystal to keep time. In 1927, the first quartz clock was built by Warren Marison and J.W. Horton at Bellphone Laboratories. Quartz watches work in a very different way to a pendulum clock and ordinary watches. They still have gears inside them to count the seconds, minutes and hours and sweep the hands around the clock face. But the gears are regulated by a tiny crystal of quartz instead of a swinging pendulum or a moving balance wheel. Quartz sounds exotic but it's actually one of the most common minerals on earth. It's made from a chemical compound called silicon dioxide and you can find it in sand and most types of rock. Perhaps the most interesting thing about quartz is that it is piezoelectric. That means if you squeeze a quartz crystal, it generates a tiny electric current and also if you pass electricity through quartz, it vibrates at a precise frequency. Inside a quartz clock or watch, the battery sends electricity to the quartz crystal through an electronic circuit. The quartz crystal vibrates back and forth at a precise frequency, exactly 32,768 times each second. The circuit counts the number of vibrations and uses them to generate regular electric pulse, one per second. 
these pulses can either power a digital display or they can drive a small electric motor driving gear wheels that turn the clock's second minute and hour hands. The advantage of quartz clock is that they are relatively inexpensive and easy to use in various applications such as computers and microprocessors. Coffee maker A coffee maker is a kitchen appliance used to brew coffee without having to boil water in a separate container. James Mason invented the coffee percolator on December 26, 1865. In this chapter, we look inside a typical drip coffee maker so you can understand exactly what's happening when you make coffee. A modern drip coffee maker is a surprisingly simple device. If you take off the top of the coffee maker, you find three things. There's a reservoir that holds the water when you pour. There's a white tube that leads up from below the reservoir base, carrying the hot water up to the drip area. There is a shower head. Water arrives here from the white hot water tube and is sprayed over the coffee grounds. If you take the bottom off the coffee maker, here's what you'll find. The orange tube on the top picks up the cold water coming down from the hole in the reservoir. The orange tube on the bottom is the hot water tube. You can also see the power cord coming in as well. On the left hand side of the base of the coffee maker is the heating element. This component is comprised of an aluminium extrusion with two parts a resistive heating element and a tube for water to flow through. The resistive heating element and the aluminium tube heat the water. A resistive heating element is sandwiched between the warming plate and the aluminium water tube. The resistive heating element presses directly against the underside of the warming plate and white heat conductive grease makes sure the heat transfers efficiently. When you pour in cold water, it flows from the reservoir through the hole and into the orange tube. Then the water flows through the, the one-way valve into the aluminium tube in the heating element and then partially up through the white tube. This all happens naturally because of gravity. When you turn on the switch, the resistive heating element starts heating the aluminium tube and eventually the water in the tube boils. When the water boils, the bubbles rise up in the white tube. What happens next is exactly what happens in a typical aquarium filter. The tube is small enough and the bubbles are big enough that a column of water can dry upward on top of the bubbles. The water flows up the white tube and is dispersed to drip evenly on the waiting coffee grounds. The hot water flows through the ground coffee beans, picking up their oil essence on the way down into the coffee pot. A piece of filter paper at the bottom of the pot stops the coffee grounds from falling through into the coffee. Hair dryer a hair dryer, also known as a blow dryer, is an electrical device used to dry and style hair. Hair dryers may be used with a variety of brushes and combs to achieve different hairstyles. Blow dryers were invented around the end of the 19th century. The first model was created by Alexander F. Godfoy in his salon in France. The handheld household hair dryer first appeared in 1920. A hair dryer needs only two parts to generate the blast of hot air that dries your hair. A simple motor-driven fan, a heating element. Hair dryers use the motor-driven fan and the heating element to transform electric energy into convective heat. The whole mechanism is really simple. When you plug in the hair dryer and turn the switch to on, current flows through the hair dryer. The circuit first supplies power to the heating element. The current then makes the small electric motor and the attached fan both spin. The centrifugal movement of the fan blades draws air in through the small round air inlets in the side casing of the hair dryer. The airflow generated by the fan is directed down the barrel of the hair dryer over and through the heating element. As the air flows over and through the heated element, the generated heat warms the air by forced convection. The hot air streams out the end of the barrel. The fan rotates rapidly, drawing in more air and increasing the air flow. Helicopters Helicopters are highly maneuverable aircraft that fly not by forcing air over a pair of fixed wings, like an aeroplane, but by spinning a rotor blade at high speed. Leonardo da Vinci is generally credited with inventing the helicopter. But the first practical helicopter was developed only in 1939 by Russian-born Igor Sikorsky. Today, typical uses for the helicopters include military transportation and air-sea rescue. Everyone knows a helicopter's rotors rotate. 
in order to spin the shaft with enough force to lift a human being and the vehicle, you need an engine of some sort. Reciprocating gasoline engines and gas turbine engines are the most common types. The engine's drive shaft can connect through a transmission to the main rotor shaft. Each blade in a helicopter rotor is an airfoil, a wing with a curved top and a straight bottom. As the blade spins around, air travels faster over the top surface than under the bottom. This reduces air pressure above the blade and produces an upward force called lift. The pitch of the blades controls the amount of lift. During takeoff, the pilot increases the pitch with a control called the collective pitch stick. The lift produced is greater than the helicopter's weight and this makes the helicopter rise upward. If the lift exactly equals the weight, the helicopter hovers. If the weight is greater than the lift, the helicopter descends to earth. Turning the throttle increases the speed of the blades and also increases lift. Normally, the lift produced by the rotor aims straight upward, but the pilot can tilt the rotor blades with a device called the cyclic pitch control to make the helicopter fly in a particular direction. The pilot's movements are transmitted from the cockpit to the rotor blades by two discs called the upper and the lower swash plates. The lower swash plate does not rotate but can tilt or move up and down. The upper swash plate spins with the rotors on ball bearings on top of the lower swash plate. When the pilot pushes the controls, the lower swash plate nudges the upper swash plate and the blades are tilted in turn by a system of control rods. The pilot's feet rest on pedals that control the tail rotor which allows the helicopter to rotate in either direction on its axis. It takes both hands and both feet to fly a helicopter. Hot Air Balloons A hot air balloon is a large bag filled with hot air so that it is lighter than the surrounding air. In the late 18th century, Joseph and Jacques Montgolfier pioneered hot air ballooning in France. In 1782, they discovered that heated air in a lightweight bag caused it to rise. In most modern hot air balloons, the envelope is constructed from long nylon gores reinforced with sewn-in webbing. Nylon works very well in balloons because it is lightweight, but it is also fairly sturdy and has a high melting temperature. Hot air balloons are based on a very basic scientific principle. Warmer air rises in cooler air. Essentially, hot air is lighter than cool air because it has less mass per unit of volume. To keep the balloon rising, you need a way to reheat the air. Hot air balloons do this with a burner positioned under an open balloon envelope. As the air in the balloon cools, the pilot can reheat it by firing the burner. Modern hot air balloons heat the air by burning propane, the same substance commonly used in outdoor cooking grills. The propane is stored in compressed liquid form in lightweight cylinders positioned in the balloon basket. The intake hose runs down to the bottom of the cylinder so it can draw the liquid out. Because the propane is highly compressed in the cylinders, it flows quickly through the hoses to the heating coil. The heating coil is simply a length of steel tubing arranged in a coil around the burner. When the balloonist starts up the burner, the propane flows out in liquid form and is ignited by a pilot light. As the flame burns, it heats up the metal in the surrounding tubing. When the tubing becomes hot, it heats the propane flowing through it. This charges the propane from a liquid to a gas before it is ignited. This gas makes for a more powerful flame and more efficient fuel consumption. The hot air won't escape from the hole at the bottom of the envelope because buoyancy keeps it moving up. If the pilot continually fires the fuel jets, the balloon will continue to rise. To maneuver the balloon horizontally, the pilot ascends or descends in altitude, catching different wind currents because wind speed generally increases as you get higher in the atmosphere. The balloon landing can be a little rough, but an experienced pilot will bump along the ground to stop the balloon gradually, minimizing the impact. If the ground crew has made it to the landing site, they will hold the basket down once it has landed. If the balloon isn't in a good position, the crew pulls it along the ground to a better spot. Once the balloon envelope is down on the ground, the crew begins pushing the air out. When the balloon is flattened, the crew packs it into a stuff sack. This whole process is a lot like packing up a giant sleeping bag. Camera 
A camera is a device that records images either as a still photograph or as moving images known as videos or movies. The term comes from the camera obscura, an early mechanism of projecting images. The camera obscura was first invented by the Iraqi scientist Ibn al-Haydam as described in his book of optics. The first camera that was small and portable enough to be practical for photography was built by Joanne Zahn in 1685. The basic technology that makes all of this possible is fairly simple. A still film camera is made of three basic elements. An optical element, a chemical element and a mechanical element. In this camera, there is only a single set of lenses for both viewing and photographing an image. Let's say you spot your dolphin and lift your camera to your eye. What happens? First, light bouncing off the dolphin passes into the camera through a set of lenses and onto a mirror. From there, the light bounces up and into a funny shaped piece of glass called a penta prism. Once light enters the penta prism, it bounces around in a complicated way until it passes through the eyepiece and enters your eye. When you press the button on the camera, the mirror flips up out of the way. Instead of bouncing into the penta prism, light from the dolphin passes directly to the back of the camera. There it hits photographic film and starts a chemical reaction or else it impacts an array of light-sensitive cells that releases a tiny electric charge in each activated cell. The flash on a camera is our attempt to light up a scene that's too dim to show up well, either on film or electronically.